Guys and girls, we're finally getting on with the interior of the T5. Sound deaden, insulation, vapour barrier, carpet line, all the good stuff. It's not my favourite job, but it needs doing nevertheless. Let's get into it. First steps, we need to strip the van out, all the interior, I've got all the seats out. If you've seen some previous videos, I have just put a lot of stuff back in. So I've had to take it all out again, but it's fine. I've cleaned it. Um, step 1.5, 0 0.5. Next step, I'm going to clean it. This van is 20 years old, so there was dirt and grime stuck to all the sheet, uh, stuck to all the panels, stuck to all the metal. And if you're going to stick anything to it and you want it to stick and last, you need to clean it, obviously. Um, and obviously there's 20 years of someone else's dirt and grime, like maybe old bogeys and stuff. So we've hoovered it out, we've cleaned it, and you might tell, I've already done some of the sound deadening. It's a tedious job. I've probably spent a couple of days. We've done the window trims or inserts. I've done one of the C posts. I'm going to show you the other one uh, live. We'll do one on camera. And I've also done the wheel tubs. With the wheel tubs, there is little recesses like press marks that look good with the carpet over. They take a while to get it in there and I've used basically the dodo mat in. This one's called mute mat, but dodo mat, it's all the same stuff. It's like about three mil thick, it's rubbery. And it's what they use in the factory, but they don't have the foil stuff on. You might find it stuck in a few areas and there was some on the inside of the window wells and then I've just gone over the top of it. When you're doing these, obviously there's gonna be carpet on there and boards, so I've overlapped it in a couple of areas. Overlapping saves a bit of time. With the wheel tubs, I'm gonna carpet straight over those. So I've spent a good while. I started with one sheet, and I actually came, because I bought two boxes, it came with a little roller. First of all, I'm gonna, I looked at it and thought, that's a load of crap, I'm not going to use that. The roller is actually really good. It flattens it out nicely, and then I use my thumb and the roller to get it in all the areas. And then when it comes to cutting out funny shapes, because you end up with little triangles, funny shapes, I did spend a while cutting them in, then using the roller over them to get them flat. So we've got no overlappage, and I'm going to carpet over that, and hopefully it still looks smooth but we're gonna find out once we've stuck it on. It should do. And I've done the same with the C post, or the last post, D post. These are quite noisy. If I give it a bit of, let's start with this one. Very noisy, this one. Sound is a lot more deadened on this one. And basically the sound deadening, your panels, they vibrate a little bit. So if you've got road noise, the panel's ever so slightly vibrating, and that's what all the noise is. If you've ever driven a van, they're very noisy, and it's, no, it's, it's not very nice. You want it to be quiet, a nice experience. And sound deadening the wheel tubs makes a massive difference. We've actually got a rear left wheel bearing that's a little bit noisy. I stuck this sound deadening stuff on, took the van out for the drive, and it's like, oh, the wheel bearing's fixed. It isn't fixed, but it's quietened it down loads, so it does make a massive difference. Um, takes a bit of time, that's why I've done most of the van already because there's like two and a half three days on and off of getting this job done and you guys don't want to sit there for two three hours just watching me do this so that is sound deadening i'm going to do this last one and then we're going to move on i'll just quickly run you through the layers sound deadening then the insulation wall which i'm going to stuff in a few areas we're going to fill that up then a vapor barrier then the boards then the carpet should look pretty that is the steps I did stick some on the roof too. I wasn't going to, but I ended up buying three boxes of the sound deadening, and I had loads left. So I have done loads on the roof. I just cut out little rectangles. Let's get the stand, well no, let's get the mount, and I'll show you quickly inside. A better look. Wheel tubs, if I get in close, it doesn't look too pretty, but it is smooth. If I run my hand along it, there's no bump. So hopefully the carpet lining will go over that nicely. I have got two types of sound deadening. First of all, I mentioned the dodo mat. It's rubbery. You can manipulate it into areas. I don't like to stick too much of that stuff down for two reasons. 
Firstly, it is very heavy. So if you fill your van up or your car up, it's gonna be a bit heavier. Secondly, it's not the easiest to get off. I don't think, this ain't a transit, so the wheel arches don't go rusty. So I doubt I'll ever need to take that off. With the flat panels, doesn't look as pretty. There's a few gaps. With the flat panels, I use this stuff, and it is a foam back stuff. It's really light, and it does two jobs. Not only is it sound deadening, but it has got thermal properties too. Um, so I use that stuff to get in the little areas, and I use that stuff on the flat areas. And yeah, I've just gone round, I've stuck it in a few places, we've got a few bits on the roof, and I did do a few little areas. Anywhere that there's a little void, I know that one's hard metal, but anywhere there's a little void, like these boxes, the sound does come up massively. So I have done around the bottom of the seat belts and just a few other areas. We've got foil tape over a lot of the holes and then I had loads of the foam stuff left. So we've just covered the holes in the foam stuff. You could just use the uh, foil tape, but we had loads of it. So we stuck it on. I did do a full piece over the front, because obviously you want the cabin to be nice and quiet. So we've got a bit of sound deadening and a bit of the foam deadening. And I think we're done with that. I have got the last post I want to show you, which is this one. So I'll cut a few pieces out and I'll show you how it goes on. Let me find the roller actually. Because I bought two boxes, bought a third box in the end, and a little bit annoying, but you'll never see it. One box of sound dodo, sound matting, had no print on it. This one's got a happy face on it, yeah, and it says mute mat. Roller, easy. And uh, the second, the uh, first time I used it, absolutely brilliant. And I'm trying to get it as flat as possible, so the carpet, you can't see it basically under the carpet. Um, and on this edge bit, I just rolled, kept rolling over the edge, and now that's smooth. The carpet's going to go around there, and you're not going to see it. Um, second piece is going to come up here, obviously. And then how did I do that? I cut a little overhang because when it tries to overhang too much, you then get creases, and I'm trying to keep creases to a minimum. So I'm going to carry on with this last post, and I believe. That's the last of the sound deadening. It's taken me a while to get here. This is the slowest, tedious job. But once this is done, it's all fast and uphill from there. Just getting on with this last post, done a bit more matting, and I want to give you a top tip. Because I can't overlap, I want it to sit flush, we're gonna, we're gonna carpet it and we don't want to see the bumps. I have just gone round, and you can see the outline to where the other panel is. I've got a fresh blade. If I'm cutting it now, after it's been stuck on, I'm gonna use a blade. To cut it before, I've got a decent pair of scissors. A decent pair of scissors is a must have when doing any of these, whether it's the carpet lining, whether it's any of the trimming, get yourself a decent pair of scissors. I think there was about a tenner, so they might not be super decent, but they're good enough. Good enough for the girls we date. Um, and I'm just gonna cut right on the line with a fresh blade. Hopefully this works out on shot. It did the other side, but I might have spent a bit more time doing it off camera. throw that piece away he's going there and then that did cut nice did it cut nice enough i believe so now we're going to roll her over the two and that has gone absolutely swimmingly and i don't know if you can see in the shot one sheet is with the writing upwards one sheet is with the writing upside down that is bothering me but i'm not peeling it off or doing it again and another reason why i didn't want the print on it but it is what it is never gonna see it again but I know it's there um, yeah rolled that out now when I carpet over that you're not gonna see the line I have got one more cut to do along here um, 
and then finish the rest. But we're nearly there. Just wanted to show how to get it nice. Oh, yeah. Well, a few hours has passed. Been out for dinner. I've come back. We're back. Finally done with all the sound deaden and insulation. It is a tedious job. I'll show you that post in a minute. That's what we was doing in the last shot, I forgot. Also been out and bought the missus a dog. She wanted a, a whip hit. Some dogs, uh, puppies come up for sale. She's never had a puppy. She's always looked after, always looked after rescue dogs or rehoming them or um, adopt, looking after them until they find a new home. Missus cares for dogs. So I'm buying her a brand new puppy. Sort of goes against what she does, but she's happy to get a brand new puppy, whip it. Anyway, enough chit chat about uh, DTE lifestyle. Um, yeah, finally done with all the sound deadening insulation. There was a lot going on. It takes a while. Take your time. I will show you that post in a minute. Lastly, just to run it by you one more time, I use the sound deadening stuff, the rubbery stuff, in the small areas, the round areas that you need to get the shapes and stuff. And then I use the lighter stuff, the foam stuff with the foil back on the straight flat surfaces because that doesn't bend as well. It'll bend one way, but it won't bend in multiple ways. So we use that. Anyway, that's done. Easy. Bosh. Over. Thank you very much. I'm going to do some on the roof. or well, I've already done some on the roof. You might be able to see in the top of the shot. Have we got some better light. Let me shuffle back a little bit. Is that any better? I've got a little light here. Footage gets a bit pony when it's dark. Anyway, this is 12 mil household carpet underlay. It's purple. It's pretty. It's nice. And I done the same in my caddy. Worked out brilliant. I cut squares or rectangles to fill in the voids on the roof. I'll show you better in a minute. I put two layers, two layers actually works out perfect flat to where the board's going up to or where the vapour barrier's going up to. It's as simple as that. Measure it, width, length. I cut one slightly smaller, I'll show you that. And then I cut one a bit bigger, spray glue, wait 10 minutes for it to flash off. Big mistake everyone makes with spray glue, you've got to spray it, then you've got to wait 10 minutes for it to flash off till it goes tacky then use it. Um, two layers, stuck them on, easy. Two layers on all of these in the back, and then I have stuck one layer on the front. We have got the headboard, headboard? It's not my ass. Headlining going in front of there, and we can only get one sheet, one sheet or plenty, on the front. Um, happy with that. I have got two on these, and one on this, and none on that one. That way I can show you start, middle and end. Let me get this camera on a better stand and I'll show you what's going on. After the roof is done with this, because we've gone from sound deadening now to insulation, whether that be the, the wall looking stuff, the foamy stuff, all this stuff, that's the next step. So once I'm done with the roof and the purple in, I'm going to get the... Uh, Insulation, it's a bit like what's in a quilt. And we're gonna fill the voids. But let's look at the roof next. Let me get a better stand. Oh, that is not comfy. So let's have a better look. Let me get comfy. That is what the roof looks like beforehand. I have stuck a couple of pieces on. You could stick it all the way over. You could just stick um, like full sheets over rather than cutting it in strips. But we've done it in strips. We filled in the gaps, we filled in the blanks. There is still a couple of gaps. I am gonna get a couple of pieces on this last back bit, but it is the carpet underlay I wanna talk about. Um, and it's as simple as it looks. Let me shuffle forward. Oh, kneeling on that's quite nice. So the first one, I come inside the line. And then the second one, I overlap and come over it. Then when you've got two layers on there, it is the same thickness as where the board goes. Um, it works out pretty nice actually. That's 12mm underlay, two sheets. One on the inside gap, second one goes over the top. Um, it's literally as simple as it sounds. Two sheets and then one sheet on the, the final bit at the front. Nice and easy. I am going to show you 
one sticking up here. Bit practical for you guys, because I know you like a bit of practical. So now back on the stand, and I've already got some pre-cut pieces. So I, in my old workshop, if you're really new to the channel, you might have only ever seen me in this workshop. Massive workshop. Well, it's not my workshop. My workshop is down there. I know a lot of you uh, older subscribers will know that. 45 in, 52 out. My buddy's already written on them as well. And, oh, that's what I was saying. So back down in my workshop a couple of years ago, hello. Uh, I had uh, my friend James, he would come in and help. He would help a lot, actually. And then uh, COVID happened, and I haven't seen him for two years. He just stayed at home for two years. Well, he's come back out, and he's such a helpful. He was my right-hand man. I could rely on him. I'd ask him something, he'd be there. A bit slowly, so if you were dying in the middle of the night and you called him, he would come, but he might already be petered out. Um, but he will be there. Um, nice guy. Well, anyway, he's been back. He's been helping me. If you see this, James... Big shout out to you, my man. Good to see you. Um, and I shot out to eat dinner by the missus a dog. And he has cut some of these already for me. But they're all different sizes. It would have been handy. What is going on out there? Jesus. It would have been handy if these gaps were all the same width. That way you could have just cut four of the same one and four of the bigger one, but they're not. They're all different sizes. So I went and bleh, while I went out, James cut the rest of them. Anyway, that piece is the next piece. Spray glue. Oh, I will put a link to everything I've used in the video description. I have probably spent 300 quid in total on eight meters of carpet. I've got loads of carpet, by the way. Uh, loads of insulation, eight meters of anthracite carpet, loads of other stuff. I've bought a couple of boxes of this dodo matting, couple, uh, a roll of that other, excuse me, a roll of that uh, other foamy silver foil back stuff. Probably spent about 300 quid, but it is going to be quiet in there. It's the difference between uh, a Bentley and a Fiesta. You go down the road in a Bentley, I think, never been in a Bentley, and it's quiet. You go down the road in a Fiesta, it's noisy. Someone else is turning up. What is going on? It's like 8 o'clock at night. I don't know what's going on, but it really, it ruins my train of thought. Looks like they're coming in here as well to completely kill the shot. I'm gonna get some spray glue. Quick. Oh, there's wiring loom in the way. Well, that's got spray glue on it. I don't put loads up. enough to make it stick. Need to get that bit of wiring out of the way. Will a short shaft... Oh, I can see arcing out there. Is that arcing out? Did I? Oh, it left the clip there. <sighs> Hammer and screwdriver will sort that out. Oh yeah. There is a ruckus going on out there. Bit of spray glue. You need to put some on both surfaces. So, I'm going to put this about there. But you guys want to see, don't you? There we go. Not loads on there. And if you're wondering, I reckon I will use two cans 
on the whole roof, sticking this stuff up. Now, you need to wait 10 minutes. If you go straight in and stick it up now, it's actually, it feels wet. After 10 minutes, the solvent dries out, goes tacky. Here comes all that noise again. I'm gonna make sure I, they know I can see them. Because, oh my God, we're on an industrial estate, you see. You get some people trying to fly tip. So when I hear noise like that, this time of night, it's pitch black, I'm out there. What's going on here then? What's going on? Oh, I need to trim the corners off. Quickly trim these corners off. It's easier than trimming them while it's up there. The second one you don't need to trim now. Trim down, it just lays over the top. But the first one, there's some little contours. Still not tacky enough. Gonna give it another five minutes. Oh, that's sticky. Yeah, I'll give it another couple more minutes. I'm gonna spray glue the rest of these up. That way I can go bosh, 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 stick them all up. But I'll show you that one going up. It's simply, simple, simple as it looks. Now, oh, James, you've written on these 52 in, should that say? Out, 51 out, oh, I don't know. But I'm gonna spray glue them anyway. I'll spray glue these and I'll show you sticking the first one up. And we are back. Spray glued the other ones. And you're all clever enough watching this, you know what's going on. We're literally sticking it up. <clears throat> Remembering that the first one is going inside the lines. And I've done this on my caddy. And uh, the reason for going OTT like this on the roof, if you do plan to stay in it, it, it really dampens down the noise of rain and stuff like that. Have you ever slept in a tent while it's raining? Well, you ain't doing much sleeping, that's for sure. And it's even worse on a metal roof of a van. And doing this really quietens it down. And it's, it's got thermal properties. Keeps the heat out for a while in the summer. Keeps the heat in in the winter. And it just adds to the thermal property or thermal value, would that be right? James has cut it. Oh, that bit's too long or too wide. I'm going to have to shimmy a bit off the edge. But if I do a demonstration, here's the roof. Mm, that bit's not flexible. That's backfired. In the middle ones, it echoed like. But if we go to the roof. Oh, yeah. I need to cut a little piece off this side because it's too wide. James done it when I went, so he's rushed it and gone home. But it's fine, he's still done it, thanks James. I'm gonna sliver some off that, then I'm gonna come in here with the spray glue, put some on it, making sure to get some in the middle and the edge. We don't want it peeling down, even though the headline is gonna keep it up. And then we're gonna look at the wall stuff. What else is it? It's a bit like house insulation, but it ain't. And I'll tell you the reason why when I get it out. Let me get this bit done. Done all the roof, and I did stuff some in this end little panel. We'll have a better walk around in a minute. And then I decided, as I had some left, why not stick some in the window holes? I used five meters, or five and a half meters. The guy said there's just over five meters, and there's a little bit left. 
So I reckon I used almost on the nose five metres of carpet underlay to do the roof, two layers all the way, and then one layer under the headlining, and then all four little corner windows. I haven't put loads of spray glue in these. Let's say there was some damage, and this stuff, this foily stuff, that slowly peels off. So if there's some damage, you can still get to it. This stuff, it comes off. But it does also stick, because you wouldn't want it all falling down, down on the bottom. I'm finally done. Done with the sand deadening, done with the, uh, the carpet underlay on the roof and the sides. Let's have a better look, and then let's move on to the insulation. I think we're halfway. Oh yeah, this is where we're up to. And if we have a look under the headlining, all the way back, looking very good. And if I shimmy through and do a bit of a better pan, there's plenty of underlay. Now, I will show you this last post I mentioned. I mentioned earlier in the video, the faces are happy faces. Mute mat is the right way up, then they're upside down just have to live with that and uh, yeah it, that went on smooth too there's no lumps or bumps between any of the mat that way I can carpet straight over that and uh, it should still look smooth now oh one one last bit I just crudely I stuffed some bits in there that's not even glued down I did glue a piece on and uh, yeah I just filled it up a little bit Happy with that. Moving on to the insulation. And I mentioned earlier that I'd explain the difference. God, the sound is getting, the sound has changed in there now. It's a bit, this is a perfect recording room, like a microphone room. It sounds good. Anyway, this is the insulation. It's called Dial with two L's. Yes, and I get it from B&Q. And I mentioned the difference between house insulation and an automotive insulation. The difference is house insulation, you know, the itchy stuff, well, that absorbs moisture. So if you've got that in your van, heavy breathing, don't know what you're up to, it can soak through, especially if you've got no vapor barrier there. It's going to get minging, damp, smell, maybe rush your panels out and just not be very healthy. This stuff is made from recycled plastic bottles, so it doesn't absorb any moisture at all. This stuff's from B&Q, 22 could a roll, and this is the second roll. I've already bought one roll and pre-cut some pieces just before Christmas. Me and the miss and the kids, we went up to London, London Lights, so I have already half done a bit of insulation or a bit of sound, just to make it a bit quieter for when we went away. So I've already pre-cut some pieces. This is in a six metre roll and it's 100 mil thick. It does squash. Um, and my plan is to use a piece along here over the front of these two boards, uh, window cutouts. My board is just gonna sit on the outside here. If you're going for the just carpeted look for maximized space, you might wanna just carpet in there. But it's a T5, I'm used to a caddy, which is really small. So any room in the T5 is bigger. I'm going for the smooth boarded look. There is a void between where the board sits and the window. So we can get a piece that should fit over there quite nicely. Now I might put a little touch of spray glue. My thought process in all of this, and I mentioned it in the last shot, if there's ever any damage or repairs needed, you might need to get to the metal so I don't want to spray glue the hell out of everything and it'd be an absolute nightmare to strip it out for repair. So I think in advance for the future, if that works out. So I'm going to put one bit, lightly spray glue, so it sticks there and doesn't drop down. The board will hold it in place, but just until the board's up, a little bit of spray glue. I've cut it into strips and I've already infilled the strips back in the sliding door and if we look over here and you imagine the foam is going to fall out there's nothing holding it so I put 
I'll tell you what, I'll show you. Masking tape. I'm not going to spray glue it. I'm literally stuffing it in and I've cut it so it goes all the way to the end. He's in nicely. That piece in there. All the way to the end. I'm not gluing it at all. Get up there. So that's in, but look, it's a bit baggy. You can use any tape, I guess. I'm using masking tape because I'm in a body shop and there's plenty of it. Bit of masking tape. Pull that up a little bit. Oh, it doesn't normally come unstuck, I promise. Now, it can't come out. It's stuck to the tape. I'm going to put two more strips, but you get the idea. Again, if we ever needed to get to the panel, peel the masking tape off, this whole lot will just come out. As simple as that. It's in there. Ain't going nowhere. Ain't hurting no one. Yeah, happy with that. And on this piece, again, I pre-cut these. The pre-cutting takes a little bit of time, but happily, I've already done it. But I need to remember the order. So the stuff you get online of this insulation is only 50, 50 mil thick, but you get 10 meters for the same money, or maybe more money. And I put two layers. So you end up doing the same distance because you're doubling it up. This stuff is just one go. Where did this bit go? Did it go in here? Does it fit? And you can pack it quite tight or as loose as you like. That's good enough. I guess. Yeah, the bagging's still gonna be there. Or vapor barrier, I should say. And I've stuffed this one, I remember. Let's get you out of the way. I've got this one right round into the pillar to try and, you're just trying to stop as much noise as possible. Draft, keep the heat out in the summer, keep the warmth in in the winter. Just stuffing it right round there. And right up in there. And in a T5, this process is the same for any van at all. Who's texting me? Can't they see I'm making a video? It's my pal Grinstead, what's he saying? Best SAS set in the world. It's a friend of mine. I'm into drum and bass a little bit. I was into it a lot as a 18, yeah, 18 year old. Got to about 30, I'm like, turn that racket off. Got to 40 and I'm into it a little bit again, I don't, it's not an every day, but my friend Sam still loves it. He keeps sending me uh, sets, good ones, old school ones. Now this modern stuff is a bit clashy for my ear holes. Old stuff, SAS, so that's Skibber and Shabba. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm gonna put a little bit of masking tape on that or am I gonna poke it in some holes? <coughs> I am gonna poke it in some holes. I need to do the last piece. I've got a whole roll to do the last quarter, because I've done the sliding door. You've seen me do these two. I'm gonna do the last quarter, and then I'm gonna cut these pieces. That step's done, then we're on to vapor barrier. And then some carpet, and then the one, two, three boards, carpet those, and I've got something pretty cool for the roof line in an extra large sheet of plywood to do it in one. I'm happy with that and I'll tell you about that a little bit more. But let's get this last bit of insulation done. One, two, three, bosh, then we get on to vapor barrier. 
we're definitely over halfway now. Done with all the insulation and uh, quickly, elephant in the room. I've got my silly hat on. The sun's shining. As soon as the summer comes, I get sore ears. So for the first month or two, I have to wear my hat to keep my ears from getting too hot. Hopefully this guy ain't stopping to ruin the shot. It's not video friendly down this estate, but it is what it is, we'll carry on. I'm done with the insulation. And I mentioned in one of the last shots that I was gonna use the insulation, the white stuff in here. I did cut some out and offered it up and it kept sagging down. I did try the tape trick. I did put a little bit of spray glue, but it was quite weighty and falling off. So I've done three layers of the carpet underlay. We've got the bits cut out in the squares we've seen. I had a second layer, then a third layer, and that's built it out to the same level as, um, it's built it out to the same level as the frame. You might also tell that I've done the vapor barrier. This is a bubble wrap, foil wrap, and it does two things. It acts as a vapor barrier, because vapor can't get past it, and it is another form of insulation. Because there's air bubbles, it's an air gap. And every layer of air gap is another layer of insulation. Probably not sound deadening, but insulation from heat, cold. You know the deal. I haven't done any filming on the insulation, sound deadening, but it's relatively, it speaks for itself. Just quickly, reason for vapor barrier, this stuff will uh, absorb moisture. So if you're in, in here, sweating, puffing, panting, or you got wet in the rain, you get back in the van, all the moisture dries. Like on the inside of your windscreen, you put the blowers on to dry it out. Well, that happens everywhere in the van. We don't want any moisture going into this stuff, getting wet, getting moldy, smelling, not very nice. That is the point in vapor barrier. So I have done the whole van. I will quickly show you on camera. I've already spray glued this, it's been 10 minutes. And I actually run out of this bubble stuff. So I had to go to screw fix yesterday. And I got some for the roof. Again, like everything I do, there's not loads of spray glue on there. I've said it a couple of times in this video. If you need to get to it, I can still get to the panel but it is fixed in position. Um, I will show you the vapor barrier. It's self-explanatory. I've done both rear quarters. I've done the, the front area next to the seats. I've done the sliding door and I've done the roof. And then I'm gonna run around it with a foil tape. Before I go that far, I have already installed a reversing camera wire. I haven't got the reverse camera, I haven't got the stereo, but I know it's gonna happen. So I've already tucked the wiring in because it's then gonna be hidden under all the tape, under all the vapor barrier. Better to do it now, thinking ahead. Vapor barrier, let me quickly show you it. Again, it is quite self-explanatory. I had to get 600 by seven meters from Screwfix, 15 quid, and that done the roof, happily. Done it in two strips. Done all the, uh, the rear quarter panels, the next panels, sliding door, and the rear quarter. Got to go round it with the uh, the foil tape and seal up any holes, but that was rather quick job. The longest job is doing the sound deadening. Um, that took ages, I'm glad that's over. I'm gonna move on to carpet lining now. I have already cut the boards out, but we'll talk about them in a minute. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a bit of carpet, refresh my skills, and then I'll show you guys how to do it. And then boards is very last but we're getting somewhere, happy days. Moved on to the carpet and you can see I've got one done and I've refreshed my skills. I haven't done it in a year, so I wanted to refresh on how to do it. Done it nicely, really happy with how it's gone on. It sits nicely in the grooves. There's no overlapping from the sound deadening. It's not bumpy, it's gone on really well. Even in the corners, it's absolutely perfect. I am pumped on that. I'm gonna move on to this side so I'm gonna set the camera up and I'll show you how to do one. I'm gonna do the infill bits first and then the boards after. And I have cut my boards. There's a few tips I wanna tell you about cutting the boards and, and just making it a nicer job. Let me get the camera set up. Gonna to have to get my man James, you know, the one that's had two years off, uh, to give me a hand. Let's get it. Quick little tip. 
it's quite a big involved daunting job we've got all the interior stripped out there's a lot of processes there's a lot to do and it sometimes gets a bit much for the old brain um, big tip if you're getting a bit overwhelmed by what's going on have a little tidy up pick up all the bits of rubbish have a sweep out once you've tidied the area it then makes it more manageable even just to visualize and multiple times through this I've tidied up I've swept up I've put the rubbish away and then it makes the job that bit easier that big bit nicer um, before applying any glue I've got the wrong tin James would you pass that tin of glue please sir um, I've hoovered up I've cleaned it everywhere that I'm going to apply some glue I've hoovered it I've cleaned it because if there's dust thank you very much if there's dust and debris there it's not going to stick and especially in these tight little corners make sure there's nothing in there um, I'm going to apply some glue first and I'll show you how much goes on make sure there's a good bit in the corners in the crevasses when you're cutting the carpet always make sure you've got a good couple of inches a good few inches overhang because when you start going around corners you'd be surprised how much length or width shortens so I bought eight meters of carpet and they gave me eight cans of glue so they obviously recommend on using a can of glue per meter but that's not to say I'm gonna put let's say this is half a meter I'm not gonna put half a can of glue on here I'm gonna put a quarter of a can on here and a quarter of a can on the back of the carpet because you need to do both surfaces and I've said it a few times throughout this video you need to let it flash off at the moment it's wet in 10 minutes time it will be sticky tacky that's when it's time how do you know how long it's been if you stick it on too quick it doesn't stick that well if you leave it half an hour 45 minutes it will still stick on if you start leaving it a couple of days it's probably too long I believe that's enough there's plenty in the, the grooves there's plenty on there you're not in a rush any job that you rush never comes out that well so I don't rush anything I'm going to apply some glue to the back of the carpet I'm going to let them both sit for 10 minutes minimum and then I'll show you a little bit of sticking it back in right coming in hot oh wait let's lay out on his back the joys of YouTube need to make sure it's bloody filming oh yeah oh wind's got us yeah all right hang fire James anyway this is James hello James Hi. this is the man who had two years off so yeah I'm having some time off two years how was that for you James Boring. Comfy, good. Mm. Alright, I suppose. Anyway, straight back to it. So we've let the glue go off for 10 minutes. I like to get it roughly in position. You got still got plenty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well I'll have a little bit more then. Oh. The first bit's always yeah, I've got enough. So you need to go down a bit, yeah. I need to grab hold of him. I'm going to pull him down. Okay, so he wants to come down a little. Down a little. Couple of inches overhang on the bottom. There's probably an inch. And I'm going to do the tub first. It, it's, it, it should be alright. Yeah? That's close enough in my house. So, it's quite simple. If some of you are unsure about doing it, 
take your time and any bits I'm not ready to be up the top yet so it's not stuck to it first of all I'm going to start on the flat bit I'm working round in this groove so I'm in that groove nicely and it stretched in there it was tight along there until I pushed it in there it stretches quite a long way now we're coming up the top I'm pulling it and because it's a round surface one area is going to stretch and the other area or the other diagonal direction you're going to get a cleat i.e. a loopy up bit but you just pull I'm pulling this up if I've got a, a bit that's sticking up here that you think is going to kink together I'm pulling it up and I'm pushing that down first so you keep going round it pulling it up going round it I'm going about an inch at a time maybe two and as I say we've got a big cleat here there's a big cleat on the end so I'm going to pull it up a little bit pull it tight and push it out a lot of people are worried about doing the carpet lining and I do get it I was a bit nervous the first time I've done a few vans since and it's not as bad as you think it's really malleable ie you can push it in some seriously tight corners in fact doing the Volkswagen caddy the rear tubs on the caddy were a bit tighter this has gone in easy now I don't want to get you guys too bored and show you 20 minutes of me wheel doing this wheel tub because I've done the worst bit I'm now going to finesse it I'm going to spend a little while I'm going to pull this bit back off and I'm going to work it round some of the area first so like it starts to bend round a corner here again I'm pulling it with my right hand away from me where's the first triangle I call them triangles, there's little funny cutouts in a T5. I'm going to go round this corner, I'm going to unstick it off here, and this is why you need to have enough, because I'm now going to lose some of the overall length, pushing it in here, and that's getting close, so you need to have plenty. If you're doing a headliner, one way is relatively straight, so you can have a, a couple of inches overhang, the other side's really bellied, so I've left four inches overhang to take up any slack of it going around the edges. Next, I'm going to do round the tailgate. Oh, mate. Give me a life off. Southall for you. Yeah. It's not video friendly. Have they done that door yet? done the door so with the tailgate part I'm gonna do that in one strip and just quickly while we're here perfect timing don't worry we've got plenty of time before the glue is still fine when trying to be efficient I've ordered eight meters of carpet I won't lie I did order another four because I was nervous about running out this video goes out this Friday and I didn't run run out and then the video not be ready so I've ordered another four meters but I have got it all, a full T5 long wheelbase, including the headliner, all the tubs around the window. I've got it in eight meters, and I'll show you how I've done it, being efficient. I've laid the carpet face down. I did put some paper out on my floor first so it didn't get too dirty. If you have to do it outside, maybe have the carpet facing up. Sweep the area. I've laid it out. It's two meters wide. I laid four meters out. I then laid the roof panel first over the top, and then there was 400 mil left towards the left. With that, I'm going to do this piece. Then I laid out two more pieces, the little side pieces next to that, and that was four meters of the carpet gone. I then pulled the other four meters over the top of that. I laid the two side panels, and then I worked out what we needed for the wheel tubs, 
And then that left enough for the headliner, because then I pulled the last little bit of uh, carpet out. I then put the headliner down, and that, after the headliner, that left me enough of this window, plus loads of little offcuts to go in these strips. Because obviously the roof panel comes to there, the side panel comes to there, there's a two, three inch strip that needs to run all the way along. I'm pretty sure I've done a whole T5 long wheelbase in eight meters. I might do the, the pillar trims, you know, around the seat belts. They're in plastic now. Might carpet them, don't know. Not gonna bore you anymore with practical on how to do it. I hopefully you've seen enough. I'm gonna roll a time lapse. I'm gonna time lapse doing the rest of the carpet. Not the boards, because I wanna to talk to you about them after this. Time lapse on doing this, all the bits around the window, this bit around the back, and we're getting closer. Cut the boards out, carpet the boards out. We're nearly there, are you? Let's try that again, shall we? I have done with all the carpeting around the small areas. Hopefully you saw by the time lapse. I'm really, I'm really happy with all of it, but this bit went on really nicely. Done it all in one piece, so we've got no joins. I've done all around the seat belts, all around the window, and along the top. You might have seen in the time lapse that obviously we've done this then we've done the bit around the seat belt, which I believe you can just about see in the shot. And then we've got some little off-cut in pieces. When you're trying to butt two bits of carpet together, to get four batteries, to get four, you need to cut it fresh. Like with a fresh pair of scissors, you need a really clean cut. It doesn't necessarily have to be straight. It could be rounded. You could do it at an angle to take your eye off it even more but you need a clean cut with scissors. Don't try like having a ripped edge because they don't sit together. Sit them together, obviously spray glue it, butt them together before you stick it down. And then once they're done, you can just brush your hand over it and you literally, you can't see the join at all. That way it's being efficient with the carpet. Because obviously in an ideal world, and if the carpet was free, you would put one massive piece over all of it and then you'd carpet the boards. Then you've got carpet under the boards, which you don't really need. So if you're trying to be efficient and do like I have, a whole long wheelbase T5 in eight meters, you're gonna to have to join some pieces up. Done with that, really happy with how it's gone on. We haven't got a single crease, a single kink anywhere. It's really nice. Um, yeah, happy with that. We're gonna move on to the boards. I mentioned in the video something good about the boards. And in one of my previous videos on the T5, I did do some of the roof panel. And because a T5 roof is over four foot wide, you have to use three pieces of wood. Well, and someone commented on that video saying, why don't you get an extra large sheet of plywood? I've never seen one before. And I spoke to a few chippies and they hadn't seen one. Googled it and someone on the transport uh, forum or something they recommended East Kent Timber, which happens to be just down the road from me, phoned them up, and I weren't sure if I was ringing for a Skyhook, a long weight, or tartan paint. I said, I've only ever seen eight before sheets. Word on the street is that you can get B3 
bigger sheets. And he said, yep, yeah, next size up is 10 by five. I bought a 10 by five sheet of plywood, two normal sheets of plywood, five mil, uh, 66 pounds, including the vat. Really happy with the price. Standard board, you've all seen a standard eight by four sheet. Look at the size of this. This is a 10 by five sheet, absolutely massive sheet of wood. Knife! Knife! Give us two secs, what are you doing? Sorry! I was... Better get a massive shout out for this. Interruptions, aren't they? Oh, hi. Yeah. What are you doing with the die grinder? <laughs> Killing my life off. I'm just cleaning up the end of my hangy hook. Okay. I'll be like, five seconds more of your life. All right, go on then. Sorry, sorry. Let's try that again. So onto the boards, you can get extra large 10 by five sheets, which is big enough to do even a long wheelbase T5, the roof in one go. Uh, yeah, very handy, didn't know that. Cheaper than buying three individual pieces of eight by four, and you can do it in one go, very nice. Uh, with regards to cutting the boards, I do spend a bit more time, I'm a bit picky. I like to cut the wood very slow to get a nice straight edge. It doesn't chip the edge of the board as much. If you're, getting, uh, if you're getting a lot of chips in the end of your board and you don't like it, you can run a bit of masking tape round the, the line. After you've drawn it out, obviously, bit of masking tape, cut through the masking tape and that just uh, eliminate, I won't say it eliminates it, but chips are a lot less, so it looks a lot nicer. Once I've then spent way too long cutting the boards out, I go around the edges, uh, 80 grit with a sander, just to straighten it that nice, that last little bit. Then we're gonna run around the edges with 120, just to round the edges ever so slightly, just so they're not sharp. There's no chips, there's no splinters, and they look really good. I was lucky enough to have old boards that were in this already, but they were cut out really quickly. They'd done the job, but they weren't DTE approved. So I have finessed them. I really made the old boards fit nice. I trimmed some edges, rounded some edges. There was a couple of bits that were too short. I could have possibly reused them, but there was a few marks in them. So I did cut them out on fresh sheet. Um, wanted it to be nice. We've cut all of them out of fresh wood. And then if I needed to add some where it was too small, I added it. Handy that I add the old boards. If you're on a budget, you could even keep the old boards. You don't need to be picky like me and use fresh boards. But while I was getting a big sheet, I thought I might as well get two standard sheets. But back to standard sheets and the big sheets, turns out that the height of the side panels in a T5, they are 100 mil too short in a standard board. And you can't turn the board that way because then it's not long enough. So if it was me, hindsight, I would have bought two 10 by five sheets. That way we could do the roof in one and we can do the two side ones in a fresh bit. I've had to extend the side ones because they were too short, which means cutting an extra piece, cutting a line with a grinder, die grinding through half of it, butting the two together, which might be called a lap joint. I'm not a wood guy. I use metal working tools. Glued it together and that's a full sheet. I've already done some of the boards, but I'm gonna show you one. Obviously practical um, visualization makes everything a bit easier. Let's get a board out and see how I do it. I like to start with the hardest first. That way, your day gets easier, the job gets easier. And I used one of these hole cutters. I've got 16 mil in the picture, but I needed 13 mil. So I used a grinder to grind the sides down because I didn't have a 13 mil. Then gonna drill holes in the board. Make sure you've got a piece of wood underneath where you're drilling through. Otherwise, you end up splintering the wood and it just doesn't look very nice. Then repeat the process many times because we are gonna use trim clips on the roof panel. With the roof panel, you don't want it to come unstuck. You don't want it to start sagging down. So I use three quarters of a can on the wooden panel. Again, I use three quarters of a tin. I did need a helping hand from a couple of buddies to hold it up. Um, pull, the, pull the material tight, make sure it's not too tight but just make sure you're pulling all the creases out of it. Lower it down slowly and make sure there's enough overhang around the edges. That way we can just lightly trim the edge, make sure there's about an inch showing and then fold it over so it sticks nicely. Then I've got like a pokey thing 
just made the holes a little bit bigger so we can get the trim clips in. Once you've folded it over the back, obviously you don't want it to shrink over time, so that's the reason for folding it over the back. On the corners, you're gonna get a little cleat. So I like to squash them completely flat, then get scissors and literally trim it right back to the wood, and that leaves it perfectly flat and then the board sits flush. Moving on with the floor, it's the last piece. The van already had a floor in place, all had all the shapes and it did fit nicely. We're going with vinyl flooring, so I laid the vinyl out on the floor, then I laid the board in over the vinyl, traced round it with a pen, with a biro, and then I cut round it. I did also have some carpet, so while I had the template of the vinyl, I laid out the carpet, laid the vinyl over the top, drew round that and then I cut round that with a blade too. The van obviously had loads of fixed down tie down points. I didn't plan on using them. So those horrible VW trim clips fit in the hole nicely. Stops any water coming in, finishes it nicely. I was happy with that, nice little touch. I ended up reusing the wood as it was cut so nicely and it wasn't so bad. I ended up reusing the wood for the floor because it was in good shape. We wanted to save some monies. Before I laid the floor back in, there's loads of little cutouts and recesses. I wanted the floor to lay really nicely. I didn't want it to bend and buckle out of shape. So I went and got a handful of uh, strips of wood. I wanted it to be fixed down, but I didn't want to put loads of screws into the floor like an old tea bag. So I got a tube of mastic and I put the thinnest little sliver on all the pieces and that just holds them in place. Keeps the floor nice and solid without having to screw loads of screws in it. Put a little bit of mastic on top of them, laid the boards in and I put a handful of screws. Anywhere where the boards needed to sit flush, I put a handful of screws. Not loads, just a handful to keep it nice. Vinyl, or lino should I say, that just rolled out nicely. Offering up the carpet, and the reason for offering up the carpet now, I've bolted the seat in, or I've put the bolts in so the seat sits in place. I've then drawn round where the, uh, where the seat goes, and that way I can cut it out. And if I want to add the carpet, I can just lay the carpet in without having to remove the seat. Um, the carpet's really nice. I paid a tenner for the carpet from a local carpet place. Weren't sure if it was big enough. Turned out absolutely perfect. Yeah, happy with that for a tenner. And that brings us to now. All done. I have got a small snag list of jobs to get through. I need to put a couple more screws in the board. And as I mentioned, I do need to trim the, uh, the vinyl floor in because it's ever so slightly kinking it up. But rather than rush it to get this last shot, I'm gonna spend a bit of time with a fresh blade and cut it out nicely. I haven't even spray glued it down. What I'll do, once it's all cut and sat nice, I will put a little bit of spray glue just around the edges. Probably won't spray glue the middle because it is sat flat. Absolutely super pumped on how it's turned out. It is a bit of a black hole. I've gone for the, uh, the anthracite carpet and it is very dark in there. Um, so I'm gonna need some lighting and stuff like that, some good lighting, but that's a later video. Really happy with how it's turned out. I did put some boarding around the back of the seat and obviously carpet line that. Happy with the headliner. The headliner went in really nice and some of you guys in the last video commented about the polo uh, interior light. Well, that was literally cut the hole bigger and it plugged straight in. We'll have a little look in a minute. We're gonna walk around it, but absolutely pumped on how it looks. I do need to get, what do you call it? Fresh hold the plastic inserts. I've never had one for this van, so I need to get a fresh hold, fresh plastic to go down there, and I'm probably gonna get one with a sliding door. It has taken me about a week to get this far. You could probably do it a bit quicker if you was only doing this. I was doing a few jobs in between working, but uh, I've put a lot of time and a lot of effort into this. The most tedious part of the job is probably the sound editing. The insulation goes in quick, the vapor barrier goes in quick, and of, that made me jump. And of course, the carpeting on the boards, I went for all fresh boards. If you've got used boards and plan to use them, that shave a lot of time down. Anyway, let's have a little walk around it and have a better look. I do need to get a fresh hold, as mentioned. I, uh, I need to have a look and get a fresh new one. And when I said I added a bit to the, uh, to the vinyl flooring, I've left maybe a mil or two too much. So I need to get a fresh blade and trim around it nicely. Um, but other than 
the little bit that's bulging up there, it sits really flat. It is quite plain, it is quite boring, some might think, but I like the simplicity of all carpet lining. On the sideboards, I like to use the hidden screw method, and to do that, you obviously need to drill the holes, countersink the holes, put a little bit of masking tape before you spray glue, spray glue the panel, peel the masking tape off, carpet the board, and then put a little L slit into the carpet. And that way, once you've screwed the board down, you can literally put the little tab down and it is completely hidden, can't see it at all. I always use that on the sideboards, can't see where the fixing points are. Let's have a little look from the uh, sliding door. I could have probably done some contrasting colors. You could have maybe done the wheel tubs one color. Let me zoom out. We could have probably done the wheel tubs one color and something uh, a different color, but overall, I am super happy. On the, uh, the to-do list, I have got to put the trim in. I did paint the trim the dark gray as well. The roof panel, I'm still waiting for more clips to arrive, but all in one piece is very nice. I need to spend, I don't know, an hour or so. We need to go around the window and put the carpet under the rubber. So I need to get a little hook pick, spend a bit of time, and that will just freshen up that edge. I'll probably replace the carpet on the little armrest I made as well because that was just a bit I had kicking around the workshop. But uh, yeah, looking super fresh. I did take the, uh, there's a little strip that goes around the van for the bulkhead, took that out and uh, I ended up cutting the lino a couple of inches longer than the floor and that just went over the edge nicely. Um, yeah, happy with that. Might put a little strip there, don't know. I do need to spend a bit of time and hide these cables. We've got the power cable that runs to the diesel heater and we've got the power wire that runs to the battery at the front. I need to tuck those away, make them look pretty, but uh, it's Friday morning and this video goes out tonight, so uh, any little snag list they're going to have to do for now. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the headliner. Really happy with the headliner. I did paint all the uh, the sun visors, the grab handles, all the trim, re-carpet lined the headliner of course. If I uh, come down, that is the Polo uh, interior light. And it works really well. In the evening, I come in here last night, turn the interior light on and I could actually see what I was looking for before with the T5 or the original one, you turn the light on, couldn't see anything. Really happy with that really loving that and of course you can have just single map light yeah super easy upgrade literally polo interior light cut the hole bigger plug straight in very very nice if anyone wants to know about painting the plastics because obviously all t5s they come with white plastics white headliner there's a video on the channel, DTE TV, interior dash paint, and I explain how to go from white to dark gray without it chipping off. It looks relatively factory, and uh, yeah, it's just quite an easy process, and it makes a massive difference. Need to get a new fresh hold for this side, and because the way the van was done before, that fresh hold was under the flooring, but of course now it's on top, so I need to put a piece of wood underneath it, but I will get a new one because that looks tidy. And of course, I've stu stood in bird crap and shown you the headliner, I've walked it straight in the van. Not what you want on, a, on the first step in the van. Need to give that a clean now. With lights and stuff, I did have this crudely hooked up for the kids before because it was a stripped out van. LED strip light just hooked into there, but that's no good. That is, uh, that's not DT approved. That's temporary, temporary, not temporary permanent. This was the interior light that went over that side above the, uh, the double seat. But um, for now, I'm gonna have to tuck this somewhere and put another light on it. But it does just carefully, or just lightly, poke out the, uh, the headliner there. Need to get a couple more trim clips. You need to have extra long trim clips from Van Style. I, uh, I've ordered them, but they're not here in time. But there's enough to hold it up for now. Gonna look at the lights another day. Gonna put up a load of LEDs. Gonna change the stereo, because we're still rocking tape deck. We've still got the tape deck, and with regards to stereo, I want a touchscreen stereo. A lot of people say you can't put them in the T5s, but uh, 
I'm gonna just chop that out and make it happen. But that is a video for another day. That is it, happy we can see the end or the end is in sight. I do need to do a snag list, mention that once or twice, couple screws in the board, we need to cut the lino, but overall it's done, I'm really happy. There is a week of my life, takes a while, so if you're gonna do it on your drive and it starts taking a while, don't, don't worry, it is a big job, but it's more manageable, do it in steps, do the sound deadening, do the insulation, do the vapour barrier, do the boards and the carpet, do it all in steps, and as mentioned earlier in the video, once you're a little bit through the job, you're gonna have a lot of mess everywhere, and then it's gonna, this is, what have I taken on? That ain't ever going back together. Have a tidy up, have a spruce up, and that makes the job seem a lot smaller. Anyway, this video's getting quite long, so let's wrap it up. I am going to get on with Andy's zero budget resto now. That'll be coming next. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one, guys. I'm out.